This is Love Your Work. On this show, we help you make it as a creative entrepreneur. I'm David Cadavy. I've been a solopreneur for more than 10 years. I'm an international award-winning designer. I've written a bunch of best-selling books, including Design for Hackers and The Heart to Start. From Love Your Work headquarters in Colombia, yes, the country, I have interviewed titans of industry like Steve Case. I've interviewed best-selling authors like Seth Godin and James Altucher. I've interviewed experts on behavioral science, creators from a dancer to a chef to a Hollywood set designer, visionaries on the cutting edge of creative monetization, whether that's self-publishing or blockchain technology. And then from these conversations, I pull out lessons to share with you on how you can find your unique voice as a creative entrepreneur, how you can nail the right mindset to succeed, how you can be the first to capitalize on new opportunities to make a living making your art. So if you are new here, welcome. Again, I am David Cadavy. If you want to join us here on Love Your Work every Thursday, please hit subscribe on your podcast app. And then if you want to get my free creative productivity toolkit, sign up at cadavy.net slash tools. You probably know sometimes things don't go as planned. Just ask me as I'm on my temporary exile in Peru right now, since I had my Colombian visa rejected recently. Things often don't go as planned every day, actually. So if we can't plan on something that's happening in our morning, if we can't plan on something when we visit a website, where is it that we get the idea that we can plan things as complex as our lives or even as complex as a big project such as a book? So when things don't go as planned, you get new information. You can use that information to make a new plan. So in this week's article, I'm going to suggest that you make things not going as planned part of the plan. It can take you places that you never expected to go. And I'm really glad that Backblaze is sponsoring the show because I know that Backblaze is totally going to save the butt of somebody out there. Speaking of things not going as planned, just imagine this. Imagine that you tried to start up your computer tomorrow and your hard drive had failed and everything's gone, like everything. Would you have a plan for the unplanned? Most of us have some documents in the cloud, but that is not a backup plan. Backblaze gives you unlimited backup with no file size restrictions for only $5 a month. They even back up your external hard drives. Backblaze is offering Love Your Work listeners a fully featured 15-day free trial. Just go to backblaze.com slash loveyourwork. Get their fully featured 15-day free trial. That's backblaze.com slash loveyourwork. And thank you so much to all of our Patreon supporters. As I mentioned on the last episode, all of the costs associated with getting these episodes edited and out to you, the listeners, they are fully covered by our Patreon supporters. Now, why is it that these generous people pay for something when they could simply listen for free? I asked Mike Naughton and he said, what got me to reach into my wallet? I have been listening to you for a while and respect your tenacity and courage. Patreon has made it easy to support the people who do work that I like. And the ultimate trigger was when I heard your message about having trouble staying in Colombia. I thought this guy really needs to know that he has support. And it took me a while to act on that thought, but you kept asking in your podcasts and one day the timing was right. Keep going. All right, Mike, thank you so, so much for caring about my situation. Also, thank you for taking the initiative to support. And I know how it is. Like when you're listening to this message, you might be busy doing something. So sometimes the timing just really has to be right, which is something I've been thinking about lately is I've noticed that there's kind of a quirk with the Patreon funding model. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing or a good thing. It's just that these new models always have quirks. And since this is something that we explore on this podcast is how do creators get paid, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Like, I think that Patreon is the step in the right direction, but people have to actually get around to taking action in order for it to work. And it's funny, around the same time that I was going through my own crisis, there was a different creator who went through a crisis of their own You've probably heard of Simone Gertz. Simone makes videos of really silly robots that she invents and they do really funny things like they slap her in the face and things like that. And she had a more serious crisis than mine. Pretty simple to say that. Simone had a brain tumor. She got it removed. It's not cancerous. It looks like she's making a great recovery, thankfully. Now, I found her situation both heartwarming and I found it a little strange as far as the Patreon thing goes. Like it was heartwarming because her Patreon backing like tripled during her crisis. And that's heartwarming because it's great that people stepped up to help Simone. But the strange thing is that you know that a lot of the people who stepped up to finally support her had been enjoying her videos for years and they had simply been putting it off and it wasn't necessarily the crisis that caused them to back. It was that they already meant to do it. 
and then this thing happened. So I think that something similar happened with my visa crisis because during the crisis, the number of Patreon backers for the show shot up about 50%. And I really, really appreciated that. And that's amazing. But it made me think like, oh, the reasons that I'm hearing from people are very interesting. It's They're not saying that like, oh, I'm doing this because I want to help you with this particular crisis. But they're often saying, oh, I've been listening for a while. I've been following your work for a while. And so now this thing happened and that was kind of the trigger that made it happen, made me step up and support. So I haven't really fully processed these thoughts as they apply to the Patreon model. Every model has its quirks. It just takes time for those quirks to surface. So I always kind of wonder what kind of behavior this quirk is going to incentivize for creators because I know that I'm always cautious to try to not cross the line from being persuasive to being downright manipulative in my work. Because yes, there are goals that I have. There are reasons for people to act on those goals and I want to express those goals. But I want those reasons to always be real and to be authentic. And so that's one of these things that every time I mention my Colombian visa crisis, it sort of makes me a little reluctant to mention it. Now, it doesn't make my crisis any less real. It certainly doesn't make Simone's crisis any less real. But I can see that this same incentive could make some people really start to play out their crises or worse yet, invent crises altogether. So that is a quirk that I foresee with this funding model. And I don't really have any thoughts about it beyond that. It's just something that I've noticed. So maybe some of the blockchain models that are coming out are going to be less dependent upon needing crises to inspire action. So if crypto tokens are being distributed based upon the mere act of consuming content, you're going to see more equitable, less crisis dependent compensation. We shall see. So If you have been meaning to donate on Patreon and it is just a matter of making the action happen, it is a really great way to support the show. And here is a tip that doesn't require crisis. Now, I know that when I want to get myself to do something in the future and it's not a good time at the moment to do it, I will sometimes just take Siri and I will tell Siri to set me a reminder for some time when I know that the timing is going to be right. Like for me, that might be like a Sunday afternoon when I'm about to do my weekly review and I will process things like, oh, I'm going to back this person on Patreon. So if you want to be part of the wonderful family of Patreon supporters, please go to kadavy.net slash donate. That is kadavy.net slash donate or tell Siri to remind you at some other time. Anyway, here is the article. Things don't go as planned. That is the plan. Things don't go as planned. Instead of fighting it, make that part of the plan. I had planned on building a life in Colombia. Then a while ago, I got kicked out of the country, and that was really not part of the plan. As I reflected on my unplanned vacation, I realized sometimes things don't go according to plan. And when I reflected further, I realized things almost never go according to plan. And that's okay. I had planned on writing a second traditionally published book, but I was rejected over and over again. I had planned on my podcast growing, but it gets just as many downloads as it did two years ago. I had planned on being a designer, but somehow I became a writer. There's no end to the number of things that didn't go as planned. Relationships, life milestones, careers, places to live. Almost none of it went as planned. One of the most valuable things that I learned while working on Google Calendar, something I never planned on doing, by the way, was that we are really terrible at planning. As we were working on the feature of putting to-do list items on your calendar, I tested this feature out for myself. I planned my morning. I estimated how long each task would take. I put it on the calendar. And then I proceeded to do nothing at all like I had planned. Things took longer than expected. Interruptions happened. I shouldn't have been surprised how many times Have you deviated from the plan? Maybe you found yourself scrambling to meet a deadline that came up sooner than you thought. Maybe you opened up your browser to look up something and then you ended up on Facebook for an hour. If we can't plan something in our morning, if we can't plan something when we visit a website, then where do we get the idea that we can plan things as complex as our lives or as complex as a big project like a book? Now, I'm not advocating that we just have no plan. Certainly, you could use the fact that things rarely go as planned as an excuse for procrastinating. If you simply take things as they come, you're just never going to get anything done. But to try to stick to the plan at all costs is the wrong way. Too many unexpected things happen. Factors beyond your control change. You set yourself up for disappointment and frustration. 
when things don't go as planned, you get new information. You can use that information to make a new plan. You find out that you need to get a permit to build a deck on your house. You slowly fall out of love with the city you called home. You realize that you only considered having children because your friends pressured you. That new information can be valuable. It can lead to new things better than the original plan. My podcast hasn't grown, but I've had conversations with heroes like Seth Godin and James Altucher. I've built a base of loyal Patreon supporters. I got kicked out of Columbia, but I got to visit friends. Since I'm back as a mere tourist, I'll take some trips I wouldn't have otherwise. My book proposals were rejected, but now I've self-published three books in the past six months. You would never shoot a movie script without first doing several dry rehearsals. It's what comes up during those rehearsals, the things you never planned on that end up making it into the final script. Even as you shoot, you may be changing the lines. Another word for that is improv. The first rule of improv is to always agree. Always, yes, and. Yes, it's taking longer than you had planned to finish your novel. And now, you'll cut it down to a novella. Yes, this blog post became about something you didn't expect it to. And now you'll go with it. Yes, it turns out you hate this job. And now you'll find a way to do something different. Yes, and. Yes, and. Yes, and. I think the solution is to remember things won't go as planned. You can make it part of the plan to not have a plan. That time I worked on Google Calendar, that happened because I made not having a plan part of the plan. I gave myself a week to explore what interested me. That turned into a blog post. And then behavioral scientist Dan Ariely saw it and reached out. Plan a discovery phase into your creative projects. Start with a vague plan. Play a little. See what you learn knowing something unplanned will happen. And when it does, build upon the result. One thing you can plan on you'll be surprised where you end up. Is Love Your Work helping you find the intersection on your love and money Venn diagram? Does it bring you the inspiration and motivation to make you into the person that you want to be? If so, we, together, you and I, can make this the show that we want it to be. I'm trying to make a nourishing and thoughtful show, and I could use your help with that. Please donate to the show. Just a coffee a month will help support the hosting and production of this show. Just a coffee a month will help spread Love Your Work's message, helping more people live a balanced life with a healthy definition of success. To donate, visit our Patreon page at academy.net slash donate. Patreon is a platform that lets you support creators like me. Vote with your dollars and keep Love Your Work going at academy.net slash donate. As a thank you, You'll get early access, bonus content, and a discount on Love Your Work merchandise. Learn more at katavi.net slash donate. That's katavi.net slash donate. Love Your Work is brought to you in part by our Patreon supporters, such as mini sponsor Roxana Maynard of Agility Alchemist at agilityalchemist.com and top supporters such as Jeffrey Mason and Vitas Pankovicius. This has been Love Your Work, and I'm David Katavi. The theme music for this show is at C by Dorena from the album About Everything and More by arrangement with Deep Elm Records at deepelm.com. Love Your Work is a production of Cadavy, Inc. <laughs>